All right, so I'm at the start of the Painted Bunting Trailhead and I'm about to begin the loop starting on the opposite side of the road. But I wanted to start out at the trailhead itself. That way, when I reach the trailhead, I will have officially completed the loop. Even though, as you can see, it's just a few paces to the car. But this video compilation will go in order. And in order to do that, I'm basically going to just record the thoughts as they come to me while I'm on the trail. Uh, most of it will probably compri be comprised of the warm-up process because I probably won't be recording much while I'm running. Um, or if I do, I'll have to get really creative as far as how I set up the shot because I am not carrying a tripod or anything. As you can see, I don't even have sunglasses. I feel that these sometimes these extra items can become obstacles that no, not only slow us down, but also improve the odds of failure by introducing anomalies. Like if I'm running and I'm sweating a lot and I've got sunglasses on and my sweat drips onto the inside of the lens, I might take a chance. I might take my sunglasses off and try to wipe them off quickly while I'm running because I don't want to break my stride. And instead I could break any number of bones by taking a high speed fall on these trails that are basically unpaved so I'm I guess in a way I'm trying to start out by saying how I got healthy again for anyone who's out there trying to figure out how do I restore my own uh, whatever I'm the steward of how do I restore anything outside of, of me well first it begins as a reflection there's a there was a shadow of a bird that just passed over I don't, I don't doubt we could see it, but whatever whatever passed over it through a shadow while I was saying that in order to be stewards of that which is around us, we need to be stewards of ourselves. And you can see that the breeze has picked up. You can hear it probably. I don't have any kind of a filter on this microphone. Um, that's possibly something I can carry to improve the audio quality going forward. But in the meantime, generally, I'll just try to record when the conditions are ideal. But right now with the wind at my back, it's ideal that I get going, so stay tuned.
Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm out here at Guadalupe River State Park again, and I'm just enjoying some time cooling off in the refreshing river of recovery after having run on an unpaved surface for the longest I've run. And uh, it's extremely rewarding to be here right now. Be here now. That was one of the motivational messages that we had for a year at one of the places where I was formerly employed. And the same rings true right now. Be here now. You never know what's around you. Yesterday, as I was exploring the riverbanks here, I encountered a snake that was on the bank. It was searching for food. I don't know how long it had been waiting there. Um, Anyway, I'm looking around to see if there's anything that I can show to you. And I'm thinking that today I drove, I will have driven another 80 miles round trip to enjoy this situation. And by this situation, what I mean is I was able to get my medical exam, get my wellness points, <laughs> get my inspiration, get my relaxation, get my blood pressure down and also to get some things off my chest, including some of that weight that I'd been carrying for such a long time. The more that I train in this environment, and I say train because it, it's a train of mind really to do anything for a measured amount of time where you're focusing. And uh, as I'm able to train here, and train my mind, I'm able to train my thoughts on how do I resonate with my with my audience in a more productive and meaningful way. And the only thing I can think to do is to, well, you know, transform myself, take care of myself first. And that gets me to a topic that I was thinking about earlier, which was that some of us are not really complete stewards of the properties that we're at. We might pay other people to maintain the lawn. We might not recognize that we are not stewards of those land. And even as employees of places such as this place where I'm at right now, you would think that some of the things that are seen right on the trail would be addressed by the employees. I am familiar with the shortage of funding that would permit these employees to employ additional resources to take care of the tasks that are necessary here, especially in this era when dollars are more quickly dispensed towards warlike activities than they are towards bringing peace to one another. And when dollars are poured tirelessly into those people that would mail us brochures and uh, have all those meetings with all those coffee breaks as they came up with the design layout for those things that you were gonna be paying to receive in exchange for the continued advertisement circuit. And that training has got to come to an end. We need to learn how to train with one another in the presence of the resources that we have. And so right now, what I'm trying to do is showcase how easy it might have been at one point to recharge in nature and how challenging it could be at another point, even if it's just a point several years apart, where in one case I was a little bit younger and in another case I'm in a different age demographic altogether. But as we start to look at age as something other than a number, we might recognize that even some of our own grandparents were able to do handstands and many other things. However, the nutritional concepts of what we have awareness of today were not at that point in time taught to us in general by our fathers. They were taught to us by what can we afford? And that poverty mindset is in a lot of cases what keeps us locked into those things that we can afford. But we need to recognize that paper wealth is not the same thing as actual health. If, for an example, I have a large property that I can't maintain, like let's say this state park, if I need to pick up all the rubbish on this land, well, whoever is raising this environment with me should have the ability to set aside some time to team up with me and take care of this land. In the same way, if I have a property of my own, a home, an apartment, um, 
whatever, a shared space, I'm going to keep my place in working order. In order to notice that it's not in order, sometimes someone else might have to call to attention that things are out of order. And if we do so gently, especially among friends, those people who we would invite into our private spaces to begin with, we would want to hope that our friends would not be introducing more debris and rubbish into the equation. And so in all of these cases, when I talk about wealth building, I do also talk about building the time that you have available for yourself because time compounds, it pays interests and dividends. For every second that I'm slowed down, having a conversation that goes in a circle, it slows me down fourfold because that second, that four seconds for each person adds up to minutes and then hours. And those accumulations of time make it so that my day, my day starts out later and later. So if I'm needing to have time to consult with people, for an example, then I'm going to do my best to bring my time into focus so that I can also tend to my own self and, and have consultations with the parts of my mind that whisper these things like there's so much trash, there's so much trash on the trails. How are we going to get it taken care of? And those solutions that are presented oftentimes will come in complex, simple solutions that are like, well, we just need to team up with one another, learn how to sing a new tune and get to work because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So at the park entrance here, they hand out river trash bags and I'm going to at some point incorporate that information into a segment here so that we can know, well, are those trash bags made out of repurposed materials? How can we incentivize this? You know, can we give out discounts on Texas park passes if people fill up these bags and bring them back? And, uh, and maybe even identify some of the top culprits on paper. If we educate ourselves with what it is that we continue to see ourselves around here, like let's say plastic bottle caps, then we might want to oversimplify and recognize that plastic bottle caps, which are also listed as a choking hazard, are not something we want to leave all over our dwelling, especially if we are a young parent or a parent of a young person, however we might word that. All in all, that's just one concept of stewardship and what it means to tend to what is around us and what it means to be able to think that calmly in order to tend to ourselves so that we can have that type of logic of thoughtfulness to begin with. So as I'm sitting here in the water, I'm reintroducing some caloric intake that I had not had before. I am not on a strict vegan plan, what I'm on is a plan of what makes sense. There are a lot of things, a lot of, there's been a lot of life that's already been taken and I'm not justifying it in any way. What I'm saying is as I am in a place where I'm able to err on the side of nourishment, even if some people might call well-prepared foods that people have put in genuine sincerity into meat and otherwise, in other words, like as the native practices would have been in a bygone era, as we consume things that were produced with gratitude and as we have gratitude, as we consume those things, and even as we sit in the current of all of the billions of molecules of water, I didn't see what flew on the screen, but you saw that little synchronicity, billions of molecules of energy in the water, it can help me to absorb the positive current. So one of the things I like to do is not wet my shirt any further than it is. Right now my shirt was entirely sweat stained. It's sitting in the sun right now. And part of the simplicity for me as a guy is I can do that. Uh, if you're a girl and you have your sports top on or whatever, you can you know take a dip in the river, do the same thing. Uh, if you're in a place that doesn't care what the rules are or if the distances are far and great between, uh, you need to make decisions on your own as to what's reasonable within the guidelines of what's happening around you. Read the room, so to speak. If somebody is talking with you in a way where they're trying to say, hey, I don't have time for that stuff because all of these things that are happening are jeopardizing all of our ways of life and livelihood as we know it. If I say something like that and I'm genuinely shocked that we need to have started doing something and we're having trouble doing it, if I'm shocked about that and I'm at the peak of my health and essentially the peak of my wealth, 
then many people should be able to hear the very valuable message that's being passed along and do something with it. However you reinvest this energy and this information is up to you. Uh, I probably will have a couple more thoughts to interject here and there, but for right now I'm going to get on to just enjoying this soak. I'll uh, put this compilation together before the evening tonight and let you know how things went. But uh, I have been running for maybe, I don't know, two weeks. And this weekend will be my, I guess my second attempt at the Couch to 5K program. But my attempt will be a little bit beyond what the couch to 4k chart was giving because I've been kind of running at a natural pace a little bit further than the one minute and then the one and a half intervals, one and a half minute intervals that they were uh, recommending. And I already cranked out my first continuous mile of running and that felt good. So like I said, I'm, I'm recovering in a way where I know that if you had the opportunity to talk with your doctor and see the type of program that I'd put in, how it was 100% natural and how I didn't need to have uh, any kind of anti-inflammatories or any kind of uh, anti-statins or any of those type of medications that that basically are also coming with so many side effects, not to mention the plastic bottles they come in. If you could see all of this and if people could understand that profit should not be the motivating factor, I believe we would come to a conclusion that would lead us to believe there should be a lot less plastic lids floating about in these rivers of life and restoration. So I hope you agree. And if you do, please don't, for, or don't, whatever, please don't forget to click on the corresponding thumbs up or thumbs down and enter why you agree or disagree into the comments in the comments field below. Thanks so much for reading the description now and then. And Mostly, thanks for revisiting some of the content we're talking about so that we can find ways to share the good news. Until next time, peace, love, and all that old school stuff. It was another amazing day out here at Guadalupe River State Park. I got to see a very young 
soft so soft shell turtle of some sort. It wasn't a red eared slider. It was a turtle that appeared to have kind of a more leathery than plate like shell. Again, that was just the appearance. I really don't know what I was looking at. I'll have to look it up online. I'll probably have already put up a little pop up that showed what kind of turtle it was. Whatever the case. That was really cool. There were so many cool things that happened today, just like every day that I'm out in this area. Right now I've got the last remaining bits of shade. If you can see, got the hatch open to throw some shade on myself. <laughs> As if I didn't need any more. In some cases, the shade comes in handy. In some cases, what was supposed to remain hidden will remain hidden until the point when it was supposed to be revealed. In some cases, it might be far too challenging to think in terms of global climate challenges when we have such difficulties maintaining our own personal climate. The only way to maintain our own climate is to relate this situation again to stewardship. And earlier I touched on a subject that I don't think I completely narrated, but the subject talked about how if we were not seemingly capable of maintaining that which we were allowed to be steward of, it might be our responsibility to turn that location over to new stewardship. And the reason for this is because although we have worked for quite some time to acquire our belongings, as many of those belongings go to disuse, they also go into disrepair. I've had many opportunities to live in different locations, and by many, what I mean is more than necessary. And in these cases, the prevailing laws trumped any kind of camaraderie that would have had would have been forged out of friendship true friendship by that what i mean is there are a lot of people who are passing on a lot of generational wealth to people who don't really deserve it who didn't put any kind of stewardship into those areas that required maintenance and so in a way, even though we think we're preserving our heritage by passing on things to our own heirs, in some cases, passing on generational wealth is passing on lineages of destruction, mass consumption, if, if nothing else, mass consumption. And so to feel bound to these lineages is a true form of enslavement. When we feel that we're powerless to carry forward our own generational wealth because it would be dictated by somebody else, that in a sense is a form of servitude, slavery. The other day I was watching a motivational speaker and he was talking about the issue of race and he was talking about it from a different demographics perspective. And he said, these are practically word for word. We were freed. We got our freedom hundreds of years ago or however long ago it was. It's up to us to use that freedom. Now, I'm 45 years old and both what was taught to me by my corporatized <clears throat> corporatized classrooms. Did you hear that bird chattering? And also that which was taught to me by me learning, by traveling and reading about things that actually happened as they were presented by both sides. I learned that sometimes history is in fact told by 
the victor. And the victor may embellish in terms of what is true and what is made up. So, truth from fiction sometimes is more difficult to understand without examples. And the truth is that many of us are struggling to maintain that which has consumed our time. And we're struggling to do so as we're doing many, so many, many other things that are prioritized in such a way that maybe the inefficiency has to do with how we are prioritizing what we're prioritizing to begin with. So today I talked about healthcare, wellness, conservation, wildlife, and I did that from a place where I was able to enjoy all of those same very elements in the presence of those who would be enjoying time doing the same thing. Every one of us had a different perspective, but in our interactions, we were able to share information, share wealth, and also to share a pleasant day with one another because we were able to have a communication. We were able to have a conversation without becoming agitated at a level that prevented us from talking at length in distant remote locations such as this one, which are peaceful on their own. Here we've been sitting, we can hear a few birds, which is a change of pace. Perhaps my own hope changed. Perhaps my own health changed. And that which was around me started to change as well. However we want to view it, I'm absolutely enjoying what I am permitted to enjoy. Imagine someday if the nation again were to shut down the capability of someone to come to these places to recover. Imagine at that point that all I could do to reiterate, to reintroduce myself in a place like this would be to become the trash person, picking up trash on the trails. As long as no one else were here, throwing their trash all over the place, this place would look beautiful, more and more beautiful every day. And it would look beautiful if people weren't throwing their trash all over this place. As long as people continue to be allowed into this place without any personal responsibility aspect, where they can come into a public land and attempt to kill the wildlife or destroy the vegetation or simply errantly throw rocks all about without thinking about the noise level and the people around wanting to, and the animals that are left, wanting to have a bit of rest in these nutrition, nutrient deficit, in these caloric deficit times when we should be staying still, conserving energy. Imagine that even myself here running through this place right now just to regain that which I lost so easily among my comrades Imagine that instead we were able to bridge the conversations that would actively reduce the overall health care costs of a nation if we were to only also, in conjunction, pair the consumer aspect to those ill healths that require our health care industry to be such a big business to begin with. Imagine, imagine if we didn't have all the cups that came in those containers, or imagine we didn't have all the beverages that came in those containers that were strewn all about the river. Imagine we didn't have those snacks all over the place. Imagine we only had walked into this place with a peach or a plum or an apple. And imagine the most polluted that we ever polluted the river was to throw a peach core into the river and imagine that food was from a local source like I don't know Fredericksburg peaches for an example and imagine that that peach pit 
were to float down the river and have a chance just because of the fact that it was taken from a living and sustainable food, it would have a chance to give back to nature in the same way so that nature could also have food to eat during these times when you don't know per hectare how many things are going to actually bloom because of so many variables. All of these topics, again, are, are so interlinked that we can't help but begin to learn how to communicate those aspects together. If we're going to dismiss one another out of each other's capabilities of conversation because we can't talk about anything else other than other people, then we're going to come up short. In a lot of cases, some people might think I'm talking about other people one-on-one. -on -one. This is a collective issue. This isn't talking about other people. This is talking about us and our livelihood. Because you're listening to this, you understand, especially if you read the descriptions in some of the previous videos, you understand that you are bound to the law of attraction. Contractually, even. You know it. Your word is what you're bound to. And so when you go back on your word, or when you have to go back on your word just because there was an error, you know, not everyone's being mean on purpose. Some people are making errors. If you have to go back, the difference between whether we can have a conversation or not oftentimes is whether or not someone can accept those critiques. And in many cases, people continue to critique me on so many different things. The way that I show things, the amount of trash in the videos that I show, the places that I'm at, the backgrounds, the lighting, the it goes on and on. Those are all detractors and distractors from the knowledge that's being shared. And there is knowledge being shared here. You know it. That's why you're watching this. Are you contributing by clicking on the descriptions and reading how you can help? to permit this type of energy to be also sustainable instead of to constantly run at a deficit because generationally some were born into a different perspective than others? Can you see another person's perspective at all? These are all logistical and logical questions that have to do with whether we can activate our person's <laughs> intelligently, artificially, or otherwise, or whether we will just delay all of the amazing, beautiful progress that we can make when we work together. Working together is really the only thing that, to me, defined family of the past. Family of today doesn't really work together. That's the truth, because if you ask family to help with a situation, oftentimes, even if they help, you'll never find a way to repay that obligation. Have you ever had any relatives that borrow money or friends who borrow money or items and make promises, paybacks that never will occur, even while they continue to make an income, even when you're down on your luck? Have you ever had someone do that to help you to stay under while they were trying everything they could to breathe. And you knew that if you could just get out of the water for just a moment, you could pull up so many people along with yourself. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever wondered if the trials that put us into these circumstances are simply to give us the discernment, the understanding, to be able to understand who it is that would be helping you, if they would be helping you at all? And do you understand Pearls Before Swine as written in some of the good books of peace? If you understand these concepts, you're going to understand that this video for today that you're watching was specifically for you. That's why you watched it up until this point. And if you're watching it and this is for you, then you've got to ask yourself, well, what does this mean? How am I receiving all this knowledge and information and all this time? And how am I not contributing any time back to this situation? You see, what we encourage 
and discourage sometimes happens both by conversation and lack of conversation. Lack of conversation grows strength. And when someone's coming at it from a point of ego where they simply cannot discuss things because they can't get to the next level of conversation, that creates the opposite of strength, weakness, brittle, bone density loss. Things can start to fragment and fall apart. That's simply the way it is. If I hadn't begun running, for an example, and working out, my bones and the structure of everything in me would become or continue to become weaker and more brittle and more along the lines of what I would say our nation is, ta- is teaching and allowing us to aspire towards, wealthy or otherwise. The healthcare profession seems to be the number one sham when it comes to regaining our health. The healthcare profession, I don't mean to discredit any of it. What I mean is, it is a secondary after the fact measure that sometimes can be used in conjunction with lifestyle change, exercise, diet, nutrition, all of the above. But none of that will ever impact your surroundings and who you surround yourself with until you start speaking your truth. As you speak your truth and as you receive your truth, you learn that your time is valuable. And because your time is valuable, you'll start to figure out if I value this other person, I'm going to try to incorporate my time into their life as well. How could I possibly do that? Is there a work industry where we can do something like that? How do I get this person on my team? So as we think about these things and how quick we are to dismiss and cover up the credits of people who have done the real work, let's also understand that some of the things that I've showcased on this channel, which is called YouTube, have to do absolutely with me. And just like many other people are out there telling their own stories, there are people who can get triggered when someone talks about something as if they don't know what they're talking about. There was a person when I was on social media who posted a picture of someone or a video of someone who was going through some type of withdrawals or hallucinations. And they didn't quite recognize that this person seemed to be having some kind of a mental situation more like a methamphetamines type experience would cause. And I said on that post, because it was in public, hey, that's a little close to home. And that person got upset that I said that. They said, that's not, it has any, nothing to do with, with um, anything other than the scene it was. And they were upset, even though I wasn't even upset. I was just saying, hey, that hits close to home almost with a humility. When I say something with humility, I keep receiving hostility in return. I try to tell you how I feel and your results and your response to me is unreal. And do you hear me? Anyway, there's a song I wrote. I try to tell a lot of people how I feel and the way people respond is very interesting. It's such that I start to wonder if I were to accidentally throw holy water on somebody, would some people burn? (laughs) Would there be real vampires in this world? Even if symbolically and systematically we refuse the gestures of goodwill, like waving towards one another saying, hey, how's it going? Even if systematically we are programmed to not receive or reciprocate energy of positivity, we can learn differently if we decide to try differently. So anyway, I wanted to spend a little bit of time without multitasking, no steering and merging into traffic while I'm talking about these thoughts. But the primary reason again that I started to say all these things is that when we are stewards of the land that we are in and we can no longer maintain them, 
the help that we're paying, the work that we're paying for, the jobs that we are incentivizing in order to facilitate that infrastructure, we may be achieving that at such a cut cutthroat rate that we're cutting the throats of our own children and grandchildren along the way. Never once recognizing that the knife was in our hands to begin with, and it was just our grimace of anger that prevented us from looking in the mirror for long enough to see that some people are irresponsible and angry, and actions always speak louder than words. So when you decide to take action, take action on behalf of yourself by fortifying yourself with words of positivity, whatever they might be to you. If you're trying to overcome addiction, get with the program. If you're trying to cover, to overcome being mean to people, check yourself. If you're trying to get past prescription addictions, try to do the things that would qualify as lifestyle changes. These are just basic thoughts from a basic friendship that you can nourish and nurture in whatever way you decide to. As I strengthen myself against all odds, just like we all will have to be doing, I can only recognize that perhaps I have said something that had touched a nerve in you. And that you feel an insecurity. This wind is picking up. It's carrying these words I'm saying with a speed that will whisper the same words into your ears, whether you heard this video or not. I hope that you're having an amazing day. I know that I am. I have completed the painted bunting trail again. I soaked in the river. <sighs> Enjoyed the scenery. Saw some new wildlife. The hope that I'm experiencing is just enough for me to want to persevere. <laughs> it's a gratitude with a humility that knows, hey, we have to clean up these trails together. I have to stop pointing out someone else needs to clean it up. I'm not pointing out someone else needs to clean it up. I'm saying I don't have the help I need to help you, help me help you. All you need to do is contribute in a way that is meaningful so that we can somehow figure out how to resonate with one another. Usually it takes whatever the interpretation of energy is from that time and era. In this particular case, in God we trust in this nation according to our very own currency. So if you're enjoying your experience in the current, don't forget, click on the thumbs up, click on like, subscribe, whatever. Don't forget to share, even if it's just sharing your two cents worth by clicking on the description and finding out how you can contribute monetarily. Till next time, have a great day. Peace, love, and all that old school stuff.